two of London's top economists, James Knightley, senior economist at ING Financial Markets. And with me in the studio is Jeffrey's International's David Owen. David, if I can start with you, good morning. Thanks good morning, for, for joining us today. Uh, King Wright or Mervyn King? King Wright or Jean Claude Trichet Wright? <laughs> well, I think um, uh, Mervyn King uh, definitely right. I mean, at this point, uh, they should really um, not be raising interest rates. I mean, in the UK, we're getting more evidence, of course, of the domestic economy beginning to roll over, particularly the weakness coming through the consumer um, and also the housing market. And let's not forget that the uh, fiscal tightening has really, really um, failed to bite yet. I mean, this is going to be the story over the course of the next um, um, year or so. So Jean Claude Trichet should not be raising rates at this point. Is that right, James? Should Trichet not be raising rates at this point, or should we not be comparing the two countries? Well, it's very difficult. I mean, you've got a one-size-fits-all policy for the Eurozone, whereby, yep, certainly in countries such as Ireland, Spain, Portugal, interest rate rises are not going to do any good at all. They're going to really hamper the recovery that's uh, really in its very, very early stages there. Whereas you've got the likes of Germany, which continue to soar ahead and are likely to continue growing very rapidly indeed. So it, it's much more tricky for, for the Eurozone and uh, Jean-Claude Trichet than it is perhaps for Mervyn King, who can focus it's very much on the domestic fundamentals. David, we had a report from the IMF, of course, yesterday. The threat of further oil price increases has become, I quote, a key downside risk for, for global growth. Is that your big fear going forward? Well, it's one of our big fears, yes. I mean, for the Eurozone, you've got all the problems in the periphery and the banking sector is still um, showing increasing strain. But in terms of um, uh, globally, yes, the oil price is a major, major threat. And it's more um, a threat for growth than it is for really long-term inflation. Yeah. Is that your view as well, James? I mean, a threat for growth rather than long-term inflation? Yeah, very much so. I mean, it, 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 we're certainly going to affect near-term inflation profiles, but you're going to need to see the oil price double again to have the same impact on inflation next year. Now, I don't think anyone really believes that at this stage. So it's much more of a, if a, a tax, if you like, on eroding household spending power and corporate spending power, and therefore that does erode the chances of good growth numbers over the next year or so. Still, the markets are penciling in more rate hikes, not just from the ECB, but a series of rate hikes yeah. here in the UK. Uh, David, when will the first rate hike be and what influence, what impact will it have on the economy? Well, um, our central case is they go in November mm. and then we get a, a series of rate rise following that. But um, everything is very data dependent. I mean, the estimate of first quarter UK GDP is obviously key. Um, um, but assuming that's actually going to be a fairly weak number, um, they're unlikely to go um, certainly in May and certainly again in August. So I think November is the most likely date. What is your estimate of first quarter GDP then? Right uh, now? 0.4, 0.5. Um, you know, the weakness of the IP data, the industrial production figures last week, the weakness of cons construction. And remember, this is coming off of you know, um, you know, a GDP decline in the fourth quarter of last year. Yeah, James, what do you think? I mean, when should or when will the Bank of England kick off its rate hiking cycle? Um, well, I'm, I'm particularly worried about the UK growth prospects. I think ING are the lowest growth forecasters out there for this year and next. So we're, we're very bearish on the prospects. But of course, you know, you've got the near term inflation spike. What's going to happen? How's the dynamic within the Bank of England? So we still see the that they perhaps do move in this second quarter, but uh, we would argue that growth or, or the rate hike scenario is going to be very, very low or much lower than the market's expecting over the next two to three years. When do you expect the dynamic within the Bank of England to change? Obviously, three members want a rate hike now. I mean, are we inching towards four, towards five? Yeah, I think so. I mean, if we get a, a, an inflation number about 4.6% today, growth close to 1% in the 27th of April, and if we get the PMIs coming in around the 55 level on all the indicators just in the three days leading up to the May rate decision. And I think that could tip the balance in favour of a May rate hike. But uh, we'd still be worried about the medium to longer term growth profile. And that would mean very fewer or much fewer rate hikes uh, next year than the market's and anticipating. And David, the, the, the medium to longer growth the, the longer term growth profile is, is weighed down by this year on year fall in disposable incomes. I mean, the first year on year fall for around 30 years. I mean, for how long a period of constrained consumption can the UK tolerate? Well, I mean, it's going to have to tolerate, I think, um, subpar consumption over the, over the medium term. It's not just the fact that um, real household disposable income growth is exceptionally weak. Um, and that will remain a story going forward into uh, next year and probably the year beyond as well. But also the savings ratio is still at historically low levels. And I would expect the savings ratio uh, to rise further from So here. who's going to pick up the slack then? I mean, if we're not going to be spending money as consumers, who is going to be pumping this economy going forward? Well, it's the one sector which Andrew Sentence, who has been voting for rate rises of 50 basis points, 
point uh, really does focus on that, so manufacturing. Um, he was you know, obviously chief economist of the CBI um, some time ago, and obviously the manufacturing sector is the main sector providing the most of the growth, and that will continue. Will it continue? James, the manufacturing sector, is that your hope or, or do you have doubts about that one? Well, it is our hope, but to be honest, it's only 12% of gross value added in the UK and it's only 9% of employment in the UK. So it's a pretty small sector to rely on for growth. OK, gentlemen, wish we had more time. And thank you very much for joining us today. David Owen there from Jefferies and James Knight from ING Financial Markets.